Thank you guys for hanging with us for the two-part episode last week. It was an amazing vibe. Bobby and Virginia were amazing people and an amazing collection. Now for those of you wondering what is going on with all the Shelbys and the Mustangs we bought in the past 12 months, grab your cup of joe and let's go and we'll show you. So we've had a lot of questions. Where has Alex been? He has been working his tail off on these Shelbys nonstop. So we tell you, we do rescue these cars, we put them back together and get them back out there for people to enjoy. You have done an unreal job. Yeah. So he's finished four Shelbys this year already. He finished the Playboy car. Unfortunately, it's already gone. Yep. It's not here, but we'll show you some pictures of it. Turned out really neat, didn't it? Yeah, it did. The car ran and drove great. First one, we've got the earliest car. Here's our 67 GT500 inboard light car. Yep. So this, when we got this car, we got, bought it from a second owner mm -hmm. who had owned the car for since 1978. I believe so. So he restored the car from 78 to 80. And then when we picked it up, it had some areas in the paint that he'd been sanding on, had some thin spots in it. So we went ahead and took the exterior part, yep. repainted it, color sanded it, buffed it, waxed it. Uh, then Alex serviced the car. Uh, we did headliner, carpet, door panels, yes, seat trim. Did. And then just and did quite a bit of testing and tuning. Right. Um, Alex has put almost 50 miles in each one of these cars, mm -hmm. which is great. It turned out beautiful lime gold car. One of the. Correct me if, you're, if I'm wrong, but that's my favorite wheel. And I think that's your favorite wheel. Oh, absolutely! I put that on everything. So these Mag Stars are amazing. The Kelsey Hayes 10 spoke wheels are cool too, and the hubcaps are neat. But this is the coolest wheel to have. Yep, that's the 67 right there. But this car is really significant in the fact that this is a, a Tasca Ford car. Bob Tasca, look on the Super back. Car. Super cool. Super cool, it's actually one of his cars. You got your Tasca Ford badge, but it's also on all the paperwork. Mm -hmm. And what else I really like is this license plate says Mr. KR. I love that. So we've researched the story and I believe the story to be that Bob Tasca originally coined the phrase King of the Road. Mm -hmm. and he did that for the 67s. Well, Carol, he and Carol Shelby were great friends, and Carol Shelby basically just borrowed it from him <laughs> yeah. for the 68 KR. Yep. But this, in my opinion, is the original KR, and that is one of the coolest license plates I've ever seen. Tier is really nice in this car. And one of the coolest things it has, which we have the paperwork, is that eight track holder. Yeah, it's it, cool. It, I mean, it's, I've never seen one. No. And we actually have the Ford paperwork for that, it goes with the car. Uh, you put some neat NOS parts in here. Yeah. Uh, amazing steering wheel. It was an original wheel. I don't know who restored it. They did a beautiful job. NOS gauge cluster surround. Yep. Just a great car. And uh, we'll take this one for a drive in a minute. Absolutely. So, which one of these do you like the best? Uh, have to be the red car because it has power steering. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this one is this one's kind of a beast right here with no power steering. So, secondly, we have our 67 GT500 that came out of Longview. Yep. Uh, on the video, if you guys remember, we had to bolt some wheels on the front to push this car to the garage. Mm -hmm. There were some things taken apart on this car that neither you or I have ever seen taken apart before. Ever. This car was so disassembled, it was ridiculous. Basically a shell. So even the entire rear seat setup, he had sent everything out, all the trim to be replated, even every Phillips head screw was redone. Yep. So I mean, Alex, what, you spent three days just putting the back seat and all that stuff back together? Not that long, but it took a while. I mean, everything was completely disassembled. Even the steering column, I'd never seen one that <laughs> far disassembled. Every single nut, bolt, and screw in the steering column was apart. Powder coated or painted. So what, what's amazing is this is the actual paint that was on the car when we picked it up. Yep. So we did a four-stage color sand and buff on this car, and it came back to life. So this car was a show car in 1990-91, because we have the trophies that it won. Mm -hmm. um, he was driving this car with a 427 side oiler, oh, yeah. which we kept. <laughs> it's a 67 day code too, which is amazing. Yeah. And it, we also kept the uh, Doug Nash 5-speed. Yeah. So we tracked down the motor. It was still a machine shop in Houston. We tracked all the way down there. Sure enough, his original motor. Guy still had it there. We paid for it, brought it back. The original transmission was in that plastic case in Longview. Yep. Numbers matching. So this car has got us born with motor and transmission back in it. Look at that work of art. Way to go, Alex. Woo! That is killer. Yeah, it is. And you put 50 miles in this car too? Yep. Okay. So, the only negative to this car, which is a huge deal because it happened often, this was, this was factory line gold car. Yeah. And he wanted it red. 
There's not very many red cars. We elected to keep it red. And again, this is the paint that was on the car when we found it in Longview. I mean, you gotta look, it's amazing how well it came out. Now there's a lot of stuff on this car that's overly restored. Yeah. That we kind of couldn't go backwards. Yeah, it'd be, it wouldn't cost us. It's neat. Yeah. Really cool car. Great job on that. Let's look at the interior of this car too. Really turned out well. So the neat thing about this car when we picked it up is it had an insane amount of NOS Ford parts. I'm talking an unbelievable amount. Alex put most of them on this car. Yep. So it's got some really, really nice stuff in the interior. Look at that. Just look at the original steering wheel. I don't think it's ever been restored. I don't think so either. Crazy nice. God, you did such a good job on this car. Beautiful. So we are rescuing them and we're getting them back on the road for people to enjoy. Absolutely. Now last but not least, 68 KR. Carol Shelby named it the KR. It was actually originally off Tasca. So we found this car in Arizona. We have pictures of the car in bare metal. This is one of the very few Shelby's that I've ever seen or Alex has ever seen that had zero bodywork done to it yep. and zero rust repair. Yep. Absolutely none. So the, the man restored this car in 1995. Uh, he only put 15 miles on it. Mm -hmm. So we rescued this car, it's been sitting for 38 years. Yeah. We brought it back and uh, Alex got running driving, running, drove around the block. He's like, there's some, something going on with this car. He goes, I think that's why it wouldn't be. Yeah. I think that's why the guy wasn't driving it. He couldn't figure out what was going on. Yep. The guy did a great job. And there's nothing against him, but one of the rear brakes had come apart, right? Yep. One of the uh, the springs on the inside broke, so it was clanking and squealing. Uh, one of the shocks was bad, so it was also clanking. And I, I think he just thought, man, I can't figure this out. And well, here's the other thing he didn't figure out, and we have we have now seen this three times in the last two years. These ten spoke alloys require a special lug nut. Yep. It had the wrong lug nuts on it, so this car just felt weird yeah because the, the wheels weren't seated right yep. so alex figured all that out he goes he goes man this this is a great car he goes but the paint bugged both of us yeah it did um it was thin in spots so alex took everything off the outside of the car we, we reshot the car base coat clear coat color sand it buffed it and it is just absolutely stud and then there was a lot of items i think back when he restored that just weren't available Right, yeah. So we went, Alex went to Kevin Marty and co and bought a bunch of the correct pieces. Because this car was already, this was a, a really good car that we made a great car out of. Yeah. I mean, this car even has it, even has the smog equipment on it, which is amazing. Yeah. So Alex went ahead and got all the correct belts, hoses, clamps, decals. Battery cables. Correct battery cables. Clutch. Yeah, it had the wrong fan clutch on it. It had the wrong fan spacer. So we went back through and made a really good car. This is a great car. Yeah. Um, I don't know that you could take it to MCA Nationals and win, but it, it it's this car is approaching show car status. Yeah. Really, really nice. Acapulco blue, correct color. Beautiful interior. Look at that. So you rest we restored the wheels, right? Yes. New tires. Went through the brakes. Changed all the fluids and corrected a whole bunch of stuff and repainted it and the paint is just killer. And yes, we did the paint in our shop. Absolutely outstanding. I tell you what, Alex, you killed it. Oh, yeah. He has Perfect done bad. four Shelby's this year already. I'm talking done, dialed in, ready to go. These are all leaving today and they're all gonna be enjoyed now. These will all be back out on the road after sitting forever. This one's since 95, that was since 90. Now the green car the man drove every summer. It never sat down on its knees, but he owned it for almost 50 years yeah. till we got it. So let's take it for a run.
Welcome to Mustang Row at Nevada. We've got about 210 cars. We're going to talk about the Mustang core cars or project cars we have today. Here's the 67 convertible that was on Coffee Walk, episode 237. So what we did see inside is Alex looked at it. He said the rear torque boxes are good. The fronts have had some patching done. Yeah, the floors and the torque boxes in front. So the car was originally on the door warranty tag, which is there, which is nice. Color code I, which is lime gold. And the interior color code, which really threw me because the interior that's in the car is blue. Yeah. And I told Alex there's no way it's going to be a lime gold, lime gold car with blue. The interior code color is 2A, which is ivy gold, which would make sense. Yeah. See, so basically green on green, even though they call it, that's not what they call them. Now, and the serial number is where it should be. It's a little bit hard to read, but it's there. So basically what we bought is what I thought we were gonna go by and what you thought as well. Yeah. Just another, as we're calling them, core cars. For but a very good car, yeah, for resto mods. That's gonna be the best use of this car. But, you know, reasonably solid 67 Mustang convertible. You gotta buy all you can find. Just a good car to build as a resto mod. If you wanna see all about that car, watch episode 237. Here's one that did not appear on Coffee Walk. Very significant car in this. This is a Dusk Rose. 1967 390 which is an s code four speed car with some crazy rare options it needs total restoration we brought it in out of washington state it is solid enough to build but listen to the options on this car color code s dusk rose s 390 four barrel engine code five four speed manual transmission it's also got the sports sprint package gt and out of those cars how many were that color? So out of the 356,000 Mustangs, 7,800 of them were 390 cars. 2,900 of those cars were four speeds. Three were painted dusk rose, which is pink. And then three had black interior and one was a GT. So a one-off car in a crazy rare color. It's going to be a big build. It's going to require a parts car to do it, but it's worth it. The factory door warranty tag is on there. If you look this up, it's car 72T. The Marty Report is posted there. It's kind of an unusual one here. It's a 1971. This car was sold here locally in Dallas, which is neat. What's unusual about this car is the vinyl top. It's white with a blue vinyl top. You rarely see that on a 71. Uh, the Marty Report will be posted with this car also. It's a 302 car. It's sold at Myers Courtesy Ford. Obviously, it's white with a blue vinyl top, like I said. Power steering and AC. Cool car and solid. Good one to restore. 1968 Coupe. Uh, this was also on Coffee Walk. I don't remember the episode, but I'll look it up. This old car, and you know, I went back and pulled the pipe for it. Years ago, I had a bunch of Mustangs. By, the, by this point, I had this car in 09, had bought this car in 09, as it is, as it says today. And I sold it to a guy less than two weeks after I bought it. Uh, and it had had been parked at his property for the last since '09. He recently went through a divorce, and uh, and I basically bought the car back from him. Okay. It's the car's rusty, floorboards are rusty in it, but it is a V8 car. It was a V8 car? It was a power steering car? It was an AC car? The Texas car too, though. Right, it's a Texas car. So the rust of the floor is probably just from water. Right. It had, of course, it was a vinyl top car. It's got. Uh, Again, it's not, it's pretty rough. So the main reason we're looking at that is people are building resto mods out of the coops now. Yeah. The fastbacks got out of reach, convertibles got out of reach, now they're building the coops. But also, if somebody wants to build a fastback, you can buy the roof for these now. Yeah. I'm not advocating we do that because we don't have enough time, but, but even the core 65 to 68 coops are becoming popular. Mm -hmm. There's just not a ton of them around. It looks like original paint. It's not rusty. The quarters are pretty decent, Alex. I mean, somebody probably built that. So, what's kind of interesting on this car is this is an early 68. Right, because it's a 289 car. 289 and not a 302. Right. Kind of unusual. Do you notice that, Alex? No, Most of the 68s are J-code or 302 cars. This is a Seco 289 car, so early on 68, also 68. It's the first year with an exposed vent right there. 
So, let's see, you got a 1.7 something. This is the one where we bought a Bronco. And, uh, well, we tried to buy a Bronco, but we didn't get it. So this one came out of South Texas, solid Texas car, lot number 75T. This is lot 76T, Mustang Coupe, 67 or 68. Lot 77T, another Mustang Coupe. And this is a 1965, 1965, 1965. I believe it's a 66 Coupe. Oh, another 65, this is a six cylinder car. Like I said in the past, I like to build the six-cylinder cars because they work twisted up. The bodies are really good to start with. These are three good core cars to build resto mods out of. Now we've got a 66 coupe, so 365s and 166. Fox body Mustang. And it's a notchback. Now that car looks rough, but somebody will build that since it's a notchback. If you look at the back of the car, great for drag racing, great for resto mods. Coyote motor needs to be in that car. Fox body, Fox body. And we've also got two Mustang convertibles, a 1966 289 car. That's going to be a really good builder. And a 1990 Fox body car. It's a local car. It's just been sitting for a long time. Last but not least, let's go look at a significant Ford that's not a Mustang. Just for up and coming, we're not going to go through all this stuff today. But we've got Impala Row. We've got Trans Am Row, Firebird Row, GTO Row, T-Birds, Miscellaneous Fords. Since we hit on Mustangs today and obviously Fords, 1970 Torino. Cobra. 429 Cobra Jet, four speed, shaker hood, obviously. That is a really rare car. Solid and deserves to be restored. Check out the martyr report on that one. So there is our Mustang slash significant Ford update for the week. Not sure what we're gonna focus on next week. It might be Trans Ams. It might be GTOs. It might be Camaros. It might be Corvettes. We have rows of each one, but stay tuned for some significant cars for a Nevada sale. Again, we're at 210 cars. Please like, tag, share, and follow. See you next week.